you born to be wild? I think that in taking risks, you feel more alive. You just go through life conservatively. It's stagnant, it's static. The directions for a human being are written in code, three billion letters long. These instructions tell our bodies how to live, how to grow, how to die. Researchers call this code the sequence. Some people like their kicks to be fast and frequent. They are the thrill seekers who are easily bored. Whether they get their jollies from drugs, sex, or extreme sports, the basic need is the same, excitement. But is this personality trait something we learn, or are its roots somewhere deeper in our genes? One or zero, they both have the same thing. One factorial is one, zero factorial is zero. So I'll Meet there we go. Doug uh, Oberly. By the way, if, uh, if at any time uh, you can't see the overhead. Born in uh, Washington, D.C., Doug is a 32-year-old uh, yeah, high school sure math teacher in Alexandria, we're Virginia. In on our own logic, getting to a terminating case and spiraling out. As so careers go, this, this is pretty safe. Today's okay. lesson. Uh, what I'd like to do today is spiral logic. Spiral logic is referred to as recursion. Outside the classroom, Oberly's uh, favorite pastime sure. gives new meaning to the term spiral logic. After a 40-hour work week teaching teenagers the finer points of math, he says goodbye to the grounded world and spends most of his weekends leaping out of airplanes with his buddies. I actually get more responsive shock from people learning that I was, I'm a math teacher as opposed to a skydiver. I'm the black sheep in the family, uh, referred to as the freak of the family. Doug favors free flying, a form of skydiving where the jumpers reach speeds in excess of 200 miles an hour as they head toward Earth, and he's jumped nearly 1,400 times. He is what you might call a risk taker, a thrill seeker. I feel like I belong in free fall. The sensation of free fall, that being cushioned by air, just the sensation of not having anything under you, just felt like a place where I belong. I get something that I refer to as ground sickness. I get agitated. I can't concentrate as well. If I miss that in a particular weekend, I don't feel right. I, I feel off balance. What makes Doug so exhilarated by even addicted to skydiving? A typical person is terrified by the idea of jumping out of planes or similar high-risk hobbies. There just might be a genetic explanation for folks like Doug. At least that's what so this that's man what is looking for. Risk takers happen to have when they do this kind of risk-taking behavior, they feel normal. They feel like alive. They feel like you and I. But when they're not doing that, they're down. You know, life has no pleasure, has no meaning. You know, I'm not enjoying myself. Dr. Noble reasons that thrill seekers need their thrills because their brains work differently. He's been researching how certain genetic mutations are related to the brain's use of a chemical called dopamine. About dopamine. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter, a chemical messenger nerve cells use to communicate with each other. When humans are satisfied after an especially enjoyable experience, the brain is awash in dopamine and thus they feel good. Noble's research indicates that those born with a genetic mutation of the DRD2 or DRD4 gene on chromosome 11 have fewer dopamine receptors. As a population, these individuals typically need to experience more excitement to achieve the same sensations of pleasure. According to Dr. Noble, as many as 30% of humans are born with a shortage of dopamine receptors, are these people more likely to become risk takers like Doug Oberly? Could that explain other kinds of risky business like gambling, drinking too much, or using drugs? It's almost all of us take some uh, risks. When you get in the car and drive on the highway, in a way you're taking a risk, right? But there are those who, when they get the highway, are always driving very fast, taking great risks, cutting corners, etc. Which leads to another question. If risk takers are more likely to do dangerous things, why do those genes show up so often in the population today? Why haven't the risk takers died out? I think we take risks because in doing so, we get excitement or a thrill or a challenge. The other reason why we may take risks is because in taking those risks, we accomplish great tasks, do great uh, things like uh, 
poetry, like uh, novels, like music, etc. Dr. Noble wants us to think of our genetic inheritance as just a part of what makes us what we are. When somebody sits down and plays at the piano, the strings of the piano are like your DNA. You can make the tone louder, you can make softer, smoother, etc. And you need the two to give you the balance of life. And that's what results in your personality. In his metaphor, the strings of the piano are our genes. The impact of our environment is represented by the pedals controlling how the notes sound. But the third factor is a pianist's personal style. The emotion that person puts in that finally results in you sitting as an audience and listening to this person, see how beautifully that person plays. It's this concert of genes and environment that separates those who are elated by Mozart and those who go to greater lengths or heights to collect their thrills. The skydiver in me does not want to consider skydiving as risks taking, but I think that in taking risks, you feel more alive. That, that if you just go through life conservatively and you, know, you don't experience a wide range of emotions, that there's a, you know, it's stagnant, it's static, or as opposed to risk taking, uh, in a very general sense, you know, it's, it, it creates a more fulfilling, dynamic experience. So what color is your parachute? That's life. I'm Lucky Severson. The Secrets of the Sequence teaching materials were developed at Virginia Commonwealth University with funding from the National Academy of Sciences and the Pfizer Foundation. The original public television series, Secrets of the Sequence, was produced by Ward Television with funding from Pfizer, the Pfizer Foundation, Oracle, and the Council for Biotechnology Information. Special thanks to member institutions of the series advisory board, consisting of Virginia Commonwealth University, Harvard University, University of Wisconsin, University of Michigan, University of California at San Francisco, and the MRC Laboratory of Molecular Biology, Cambridge, England.